Yeah, here it is. It's supposed to hit the beer. I think we're just about to. Let's go. On the day that Tuscali Poker and Catalcoatl, friends and siblings, fought the chaotic war of creation, the two of them stood shoulder to shoulder, matching in posture and expression. With the same golden mind, they stoked their lust for battles, showing their excitement until they knew each other's thoughts. But at the end of the battle, Tuscali Poker alone suffered by losing one of his legs. Leaning on his friend's shoulder and seeing his friend's expression, he alone felt a difference of relation. In making an irreversible sacrifice, he had been the only one able to bring such an expression to his friend's face. It was through this irreversible sacrifice that the world of El Dorado was born. To Tuscatli Poca, it was an irreplaceable world, one he had created together with his sibling. Those who looked up to its creations gained a belief that their world was born of war and maintained by sacrifice. This is the reason Tuscali Poca and Quetzalcoatl continued their war even after the creation of the world. They shined as two sons in constant pursuit in perpetual conflict. Their war had always been a fight to the death, a battle that required every ounce of strength and wit. If it had not been, they would not have been able to support the belief of the folk of their world. So the folk continued to place their faith in them. However, one of those who had always been he heroes chased the heroes. It was Tuscati Poga who bore the burden of maintaining the world as its world representative. I was born into a battle for my world's creation, and my life has been a battle for, for its survival. It wasn't because I believed I could only live fighting. It was because that's the way things have always been. Fighting was my life. My very existence turned around war. I wanted to share with everyone that ecstasy, the joy of irreversible sacrifice. And what better way than an all-consuming war, uncontrolled and uncontrollable, where none are safe from irreversible loss. I do not know any other way of living. This is why, when you objected to sacrifice, when I won our final battle, when he disappeared from this world for eternity, as in the days, I had no idea what to do. You, who are no longer here. You, who were once my other half. What in the world were you thinking? Why did you abandon our world? Why did you abandon... Me? This guy Boko screams these questions to this guy, having had to carry the role of supporting this world all on its own. Instead, he tore down the very palace he had created to the point where it could not be rebuilt. The only evidence that you had to live. Gone from El Dorado, we had created. Why? Did you think there was something more important to us in our world? I need nothing, and yet I wish I chose to continue the battle of that fateful day. It was then that the rainbow of transient light appeared above me, and my soul was transported to Tokyo. I grinned all the while of the contradiction in what I wished for. The contradiction in his wish. It was after I left Eldorado, but... Apparently, Kadokwaddle erased all traces of himself from Eldorado and left. After a long and eventful journey, Shalotl finally manages to relay what the agents have discovered about El Dorado. Tuscatli Boca was born of the War of El Dorado's creation. He knows nothing but war, or is the only way he knows how to interact with the surroundings. Omri Tigre lies defeated, gazing up at Tuscatli Boca in the sky. Thoughts he has always kept himself come flowing from his mouth of their own accord. He has never felt anger or resentment towards anyone. Never has he waged war against anyone of true fury or spite. If he ever comes to feel those emotions for anyone, they will be directed towards himself, towards his own face in the mirror. 
At that moment, I am sure he will finally realize his own hypocrisy. Overwhelmed with grief at the thought of how his shining star will suffer, Omri Tigri begins to weep. A reflection of himself. Tuscali Boca doesn't actually like the self sacrifice that I we made. Pitiful! You think you could defeat me with an attack like that? You dare believe you could hold your own against me, world representative of El Dorado? Filled with emotions he has never felt before, the Scali Poka moves to attack you. <laughs> your sword strikes the mirror on the Scali Poka's wrist and shatters it, but. <laughs> Is that all you have? Just before it, Scali Poke unravels its wax threads and disappears into the surrounding mirrors. Huh? Not again. Didn't I tell you? I am a network of spider threads. Even if one mirror is broken, I can reflect myself somewhere else. I am the embodiment of endless war. A servant of war! I'll have to, to tell you, Kuan, for we are his slaves. We are, all of us. Slaves of war! Innumerable mirrors on the arms of innumerable Tuscali pokes turn their surface towards you. Memories of war burn away the joys of life. Dark reflection! Each Tuscali poke fires a black wizard from its mirror to burn you. What is wrong, my half? Where have your fangs gone? What of the part was what you called the double dragon? You want me to use it? I think I understand. You can only use that move at your full power once. That's because it opens an exception tray within your own body. Oh, is that what it is? Um, well, yeah, there... <laughs> that makes sense. Uh, well, I mean, in terms of, it makes sense of why he was hitting his own sword with his own other sword. I'm not sure that why that, what exactly so that would cause an exception, but we already know that Solomon Kun is kind of an exception in himself. Um, well, he has like 20 different rules uh, to find an exception with, so maybe that's how it works. Had I not deactivated the system of El Dorado in time, he would have collapsed from your injuries, and our final battle would have remained a distant dream. You figure that out? I imagine back then, you lent that arm of yours to someone else. Then, the rules of your world and that individual's world clashed. The two guns are between the two of you. The collision of two rules yet to be ranked in a hierarchy caused the reaction that overpowered the, the app's restriction. That is nothing exceptional as far as the predetermined hierarchy of rules is concerned. However, as I'm sure you know, a rule in chaos causes unbearable pain, leading to the destruction of mind and body. When he walked out when he turned to exception, the bounty when he turned to exception, and Ophiant when he turned to exception. Oh, are we ever gonna get a, uh, what's called, a reappearance of Ophiant? The collisions of the rules that only walk and others brought about supplied the most terrible strengths. That strength was what inspired you and your friends to develop a double dragon attack. You carry two of yourself within you and allow them to clash. Exception on demand. But yeah, I'm confused about the specific rules that causes the exception. One of them is to cut gravity, I forgot what the other one is, I, but I wouldn't see directly how that would cause a, you know, a contradiction. You can only stand and attack like that once, but you can never catch hold of someone like me. Viv Anchor, likes of which Tuscala Lee Poke has never felt before, burns bright in his eyes. However, I won't go easy on you. You have always fought until we had nothing left to give. Let's see if you can avoid me this time. This cat poke unleashes even more mirrors in the air and aims them all at you. Dark reflection! There's too many. Just when you think all is lost. Appear in all your power. The old sauce! Where our desires are as one! Wow. 
We're Avalon. We're getting out of here. As they're protecting the side, you can't use. Sure, warps out of nowhere into the sky above you. <laughs> nice save. And that's right, he has a Yoksu Sauce tap tap teleportation. <laughs> oh man, he really mastered it. And we would, might be able to know more if, you know, Black Wonders actually translated the dungeon. Please. No? Come on. As soon as you have watched him, he'll leave your space once more and the two of you disappear. Scally Poco's laser seared to the ground where he had once been standing only once before. <laughs> Time to hold, mate. You're right, Arthur. <laughs> 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 Sure. You're not the only one who can pull off crazy stunts. Someone's got to watch your back. Watching the two of your you supporting each other, the Scali Poco freezes as it's right, struck by lightning. You remember the scene, that moment, that day. It's eerily similar to the one he has tried to, so hard to forget. Hmm? What? This is it! This is the Skelly Poka's altar! The Skelly Poka's altar stands deep in the jungle, the symbol of the uh, collected faith in the Eldorado. In other words, it is the center of the world of memory uh, the system Eldorado has created. You ready, Yasiori? I would ask something of you first, Sean. Why are you doing this out of hatred for the Skelly Poka? Uh, I certainly don't like him as a commander. The damn fool wouldn't hesitate to harm himself. But you know. I bet that was just because, deep down, he hated himself. I don't think he realized the inconsistencies in his actions. Yes, he looks to those guys, squinting as if it, uh, at a bright light, for our two sons are rushing together. The war to end all wars. Where everyone fights their last breath of no lens. That is what the Scully Poker said he wanted. But he not only let Jacob be, but also welcome him in spite of knowing he had the power to resurrect memories. Not to mention, he told me that all you wished for was to follow the friend who had left him. I feel he's doing this all with the understanding of what that means, and he is doing nothing but contradicting himself. Yes, you are your cause when you receive the memories of the battle from Tasali Poka. They are the memories of an aggressor, one sided and incomplete. Commander, now I shall return to you what you gave me that day. What he gave Tasali Poka now will be the opposite of what he had received. Yasuri raises his leg high, shouts. Petals flutter and leaves fall. Elias is so fleeting. Blade of fallen leaves. Duskoi! Through the elder, Yasuri's rule surges into the system of Eldorado itself. The sacred artifact cannot give memories to others like Jacob's skin. However, it can unlock memories someone has healed away. But that explains his meanly in his uh, kit to unlock in the abilities. What is happening? I bring in the mirrors that make up the Sky Poker are memories of his time together with Quetzal Quattel. Memories of shared laughter, of shared tears, of times when they support each other's battered body. Days he cannot ne never return to. Memories that can never be undone. <laughs> These, the Scatly Poke believes, are contradictions he cannot face. As a world representative, he must put the preservation of his world of all. These memories will undo him. Instinctively, he finds himself running from them. Like a fly pursued into a spider web, he drives himself into a corner only to find. Look! Look at the mirror, Zardin! Scally Poco's myriad mirrors uh, seem to shatter from inside out, but one remains whole, at service emanating palpable grief. That's where Scally Poco is. I think I understand. My sword will guide the way. Almost as Zoda has heard you, your sword begins to glow. Alright, let's do this, Shiro. Time to finish this. Just put the, the mirror. Uh... Uh... 
I guess the best way to handle this is just to attack two different colors like this. Sure. Oh my god. Did he have a major or something? Oh no, it's just not my Thank god. Uh... Alright, it's up to the mirror. Somehow. Um. No, all we have to do is just. That has a lot else. I guess I'm supposed to hit it repeatedly. Which I don't think I'm doing this range. Um, yeah, I just should just keep on stalling with this. It's kind of slow, but there's a better way. I'm sorry, Leek, but we're just gonna have to perish for a bit. Okay. Uh, he's possessed. <laughs> I should not try to keep moving him. Why are you trying? Oh, he can pull in. Okay, this will be easier. Um, but he's got. Uh, you just need to. What's it called? Okay, let's do this thing. Hey, we did it. No, he still was best. No. My god. I just need to stop it more. How do you even get charmed? You suck ass. Sorry, Irby, but seriously. The heck. No, oh, Goliath does. Just in case. I'm not gonna waste that just he took like guts, right? He did. <laughs> I'm glad I didn't just uh, put the directly behind him. Alright, goodbye. Go, Lian and Chi! Overpowered! Lian and Chi ends the war. Single handedly. No support needed.
All right, come on now, little Solomon. Time for one more double dragon. But master, you're, you're, you're going to be able to handle the attack on the second time. You are that on me, right? Welcome to Hero Academy. This body was totally ravaged. Please do this with me. I really need your help. Master. Okay, let's do this, master. The little Solomon's image melds with your arms and your sacred artifact line in your clenched fist. Your friends on the ground gaze up in astonishment upon what looks like nothing less than the coin of two suns. Isn't that... One hand shines your blade, which severs the heavens, and your other hand shines blade, which severs the earth. Uh, okay, I can see why that would cause an exception, I guess, somehow. Is there another, huh? Heaven and earth. A tempest radius within your body as the lights of the two rules combine to contradict and clash. <laughs> After your body threatens to short circuit, and the other... And the hand holding your sword shakes, unable to keep steady on the aim. Don't worry, leave the aim to me, Arson. Shiro supports your body with one arm, and as he opens his book, he declares, Open Ultimate Gate! Yeah, the rose really delving into a lot of uh, cool techniques here right now. The power here unleashes and blazes a trail through all of space time, clearing a path for your sword. Double Dragon. No! Cosmic Dragon! AKA the AR. The light of two dragons soars through the ultimate gate and streaks straight for the mirror containing the truth to Salipoka. Ah. Ah. Poka smiles, making no move to avoid the attack, for he has finally realized the contradiction in his own desires. The memory of Eldorado to Scalipuka has survived begins to slowly fade away into nothingness. As his world returns its, to its chaotic origins, the Scalipuka mutters to himself. I've lost? I've lost. He has lost to the contradiction inside of him, or so he believes. Though he so revered irreversible sacrifice, the sacrifice of his dear friend had brought him nothing but profound grief. Though he believed in fighting until one ha has nothing left, he also to be defeated and chased from the world. Hmm. For that is what it would mean to follow K Salk Wild's path. However, now that the Skalipoka can do nothing but think on his friend's feelings, he realizes. Perhaps my other half felt this very same sorrow. Perhaps he had grieved for me as I had made all those irreversible sacrifices. Did he mean to teach me a lesson through his own irreversible sacrifice? Or perhaps it was just revenge. <laughs> he always did have a surprisingly short temper. There was no way for Tuscott and Lee Poker to know. No way for him to ask. No, for what has been done cannot be undone. Tuscali Poto looks to you, living heir to old friend's shining weight. You truly do remind me of my other half, Arathon. He reaches out a hand to touch your cheek, but you can feel none of its warmth. His real hands ceased to be long ago. His body is nothing but an illusion of smoke and years. For it means nothing more than wisp of smoke lingering over a forlorn battlefield. It appears I've lost something that cannot be recovered. No tears fall from Tuscal Ibuka's eyes as he gazes at you, propped up on Shiro's shoulder. Eyes that have been lost cannot cry. 
The tears that fall from his eyes weren't just shed long ago. You, who inherited the shining light of my friend, who has gone from this land of El Dorado. You are going somewhere we cannot follow, are you not? You are leaving this land to find what lies beyond our past failures. How nice it seems. I wonder why. <laughs> the scaly poker's laugh reverberates with the same vigor as it did in bygone days. This will do. That is down here. Understood, Karen. So I knew it was her. You know, she like didn't appear basically at all. Giant robot touches down gently in the rear courtyard of Pensenshi Academy. Two figures of the submerged from the robots mass upon a boy and a girl. They are nearly mere images of each other, each lacking any traces of emotion in their speech. Looks like we made it in time, Karen. Yes, it does do up. We should activate our devices. Agreed. Both of us have weak bodies, so we're not suited to battle in dangerous places like these. Yes. That's why we have these devices to, to, made to help us gather data. The goals of the two army are images, the exact opposite of each other. Well, we better hurry up. Yes, it's almost time for Penitentia's army to follow after all. What the? Everyone, look at the screens! We looked at the surveillance monitors and the commander to see explosions all over Penitentiary Academy. We're being bombed? Who's doing this? What's happening? We're under attack, it seems. It will not be longer before Penitentiary falls. The description of the school would mean the death of the Scalipoka, whose existence is reliant on the school's network. Oh, I see. The Scalipoka! They! Yes. They are a part of the Warmongers' forces. Machine troopers manufactured for the war. As none of our seven representatives are willing to give any ground, they employ a system of majority rule to make final decisions. The guild masters of the three true guilds are that system. These machine troopers are manufactured and controlled by one of them. In other words, at least four of the seven warmongers have decided on the destruction of Penitentiary Academy. That reminds me of the way your punky guild was shuttered. The world representatives are made up of those who refuse to see their position as the, the capstone of the world. In which case, in order to force this game to have guilds, guild matters are necessary. But why are they attacking? You're still here! Aren't you warmongers too? Well, we broke the trees between the world representatives. So they decide to remove us. I suppose this is the result. <laughs> Scully Poker thinks back to Balor, his partner in crime, who is no doubt also under attack at this very moment. Henceforth, no one in Tokyo will be safe. The entire city will become a battlefield. However, unlike the Scully Poker, who can never leave the school, Balor will be able to keep those by his side safe thanks to his eye. Trees, you said? Yes. The world representatives have established a series of treaties to ensure that they, and only they, can win this game. One of them states that until transient app users make up more than half of, of the population of Tokyo, we are forbidden from interfering with trophy directly. Oh, so that's why they weren't. It wasn't just some larger plan, it was a treaty. I see. So that's why all of the three true guilds have tried to steer clear of Arthur. Those who hold the memories of previous loops dislike the degree of randomness involved in dealing with those who don't. Thus, the world representatives have sought to construct a fair game by eliminating random variables with each loop. By fair game, of course, I mean a game in which the strong will uh, inevitably defeat the weak. Ah, what absurdity! How could such a one-sided massacre masquerade as my beloved detested war? 
War. Where you lost that which cannot be returned? War. The tribe's essence must be both glorious and loathsome. In a true war, no one is assured victory or defeat. Even you are no exception, Harrison. What do you mean? Tuscali Poe does not answer your question. Instead, he lets out a roaring laugh. <laughs> I can all see the tears flying from your eyes of those who turned war to farce. Should there be another loop, I'm sure they will come to destroy us even before searching the other conspirators. <laughs> I'm sure this little incident has labeled us as the most threatening of the world representatives. However, there'll be no such loop, at least not for me. Tuscali Poka, a soul right light! This body, it's disappearing! Grieve not for me, my soldiers. Every wish I brought to this Tokyo has been granted. War is an endless loop of retaliation. Counterattack after stinging counterattack in continuous repetition. When I think of it that way, my son's final blow was indeed the best and the worst he could have struck. Though, if I should tell the truth, I never truly realized the pain of it until just recently. Yet it was that pain that lost me the battle this time around. How brilliant you shine, my friend. My other half, to battle with you is always the utmost pleasure. The Scotty Poco wishes to return the favor with his own counterattack. Here at his end, this will be his final counterattack. Will not strike using everything it has. Yasuyori Kobumu Inta, I must thank you for your obedience. Tosali Poka, are you certain you are satisfied with this? You are to me, Ashlal is the Katal Kuadal. In showing me the strength to seek out what lies beyond this world of self sacrifice, you will be mirror that allow me to see my own desires. I had hoped to grapple forevermore with my sibling, Katal Kuadal, in an endless cycle of victory and defeat. What Anne said, today I find myself claiming both defeat and victory. To Scali Poka smells, he is retreating today in shame, but also in triumph. Perhaps to Scali Poka hadn't expected there to be such an end without an end. To Scali Poka, are you in Castle Kuadal? Do you think back to the image you saw in that mirror of Tascali Poka and Quetzal Kuadal to other? Now then, you shall all keep moving. Even deeper within these headwork quarters, you will find a solitary confinement. The man you call your teacher is there. You have very little time remaining, Mother Half. Be sure not to idle it away. It's Kali Poka. Shalal and the others take off, for it has suddenly become evident that there is no moment to leave. There is no time to mourn this parting. We must carry on. Oh crap. Bunks. We need to go. Oh, it's just cut me, Poka. My soul radiante. My super estrella. I'm pretty great. Thanks to his knees. His smile still as brilliant as ever. Please, allow me to educate those who have come to attack Penitentiary Academy in our own form of war. Yes. Yes. Educate them brilliantly, my beloved heroes of El Dorado. These novices of war believe they will face no resistance from us. Teach them the splendor and ferocity from which we make war. <laughs> senor! See, si, see, si, senor! The fighters all flash on smiles before leaving to fight the mechanical troops outside. Hmm. As the Phantom of the Scali Poka watches the last of his soldiers leave, its form finally starts to dissolve into snare. Wait, isn't that? As the lingering wisps of smoke fade into nothingness, there will be all a single remaining mirror.
as if driven by instinct, Rick, now alone in his room, moves to pick it up. It is a motion not unlike a wolf closing in on its fog prey. Is he gonna transform him? What? Something's flowing into me. Oh yeah, he's a world representative, so he know. And and the world representatives keep their memories in their sacred artifacts. So if he he gets that, then he should know about all the memories, just like uh, he was able to take Asos, right? Memories begin to flow in Drake's body, and his very form begins to change. So he should be able to know about past loops now. What the? As the light converges, the nano machines concealing Bray's body begin to change its shape. The form they assume is none other than that of the Scatly Polka. Searcher, as a thoth, and now it's the Scatly Polka. This is the third set of memories Bray has collected. Oh, so that's the other. <laughs> These plans are so smart. Like, now I understand what uh, Plan B was about. Plan D, uh, as we covered earlier. That was a. Uh, Joe's plan to create. I actually have forgot what plan is, but but yeah, plan B is all about cr uh, collecting the information about world representatives. Jeez, notice how he sh she can uh, excludes a uh, ba Babylon because like her memories t technically weren't relevant for uh, the consideration of world representatives. Oh yeah, plan B. I think it was related to R nineteen um, about him being able to collect information. Uh, not, well, yeah, collect information, uh, uh, being able to take advantage of the technology or something. Who are you? Uh, how rude. You always should show more respect to one of your manufacturers. I'm essentially your parent. My manufacturer? You mean you made me? To be more specific, I'm in charge of one of the three personalities that lie within you. You are created as a joint effort by the three true guild masters of the collective known as the three true guilds. Oh, so he's neutral. So I really am a machine, a robot you created. Personally, I don't think it should come much of a shock. There is no significant difference between your creation and an animal being born from the womb. In fact, my siblings and I are being created from test tubes as part of an experiment. I've got a bunch of questions, but there are two things I gotta ask you first. Why did you create me? And why have you banned me until now? I'll answer your second question first. You aren't correct. We did not abandon you. I'm quite sure you don't remember this, but you erased all traces of yourself and ran away of your own volition. You ran away from your original home just like Arthur. Wait, I ran away? What the hell are you on about? The girl looked down at the mirror held by Rake, still deformed to Scally Poga. Just as Arthur is successor to the Exiles, you are successor to the world representatives. Huh. Both of you are here, much like reflections in a mirror. Continue as you are. The experiment that this this endless game has a long way to go yet. I would imagine Balor may be the next to disappear from this Tokyo. You must retrieve his memories as a world representative from his sacred artifact before that happens. Wait, did we walk out? Did, did we, Arthur, myself, walk out before we actually saw that with me? That seems pretty important though. What's with these guys? These friends are still here. Why are they trying to blow us up? We should split up and see if there is anyone hasn't escaped yet. Everybody out, empty high tail back to good old Ikabukuro. Whoa, this place is crumbling fast. We gotta get out of here. Gotcha, day. Looks like Malcolm and the others are gone. I wonder if the Warmongers troop saw them off. Arthur. Shiro, take care of the rest. For me, Moritaka. We'll be right back. So I see that Scalipoke has been defeated and is a complete speller, the now wanted man. The path has been broken, and the ringers have been punished for it, one and all. 
Oh, one fl- <laughs> No, you're forgetting one of the important characters in this chapter of the story, Bale. The world representatives who run the underground auction house in order to send the trophy to Penitentia Academy. This Kelly Poco's other accomplice, Mahakala of the Valoga, a great black one. Isn't he like the main baddie of the Womongers overall? I'm after all, Sue closes her eyes and thinks of her brother. Tsukiyomi, no doubt somewhere in Tokyo. I knew it. I can't feel my eyes to Tsukiyomi. How could I have lost sight of the world pillar? If Tsukiyomi is not dead, I can only think of one other possible alternative. He must have been swallowed by the thing of the only thing Tokyo capable of engulfing all light. But how call is this? Wait, Tsukiyomi got caught? Beyond the command room, in the deepest reaches of Penitentiary Academy, you find the underground containment unit. Within its dark confines, you see the shadow of a person. It is a silhouette you know well. Is there a reason we only saw a silhouette of you all the time? Mr. Mononobe? So, you made it all the way here, Arthur. The voice from within the chamber is one you recognize. Without a doubt, that is the voice of your teacher, Mr. Mononobe. What do you do? Whoa! The crash is here for move. I was shaking the ground cell. It's only a matter of time before this place too is destroyed. Come on, let's escape! Mr. Mononobe, no, come with me. I can't. Stay back. Hurry up and run. I can't go with you. I can't leave this place. What do you mean? Hurry, let's go! Without thinking, you reach out and grab uh, your hand to him. That battered in the hand on which you wear the ring. What? The moment you touch him, the pentagram on the back of your hand shines with light you've never seen before. What's happening? How come this hasn't happened before? This isn't the first time we touched. Ah, uh, I see. Half of your body has become one with Salmanis. I'm glad to have given you that ring then. Even without me, you'll be fine. Run, both of you. What the fuck? Mr. Monono, your body. The man you see before you is rotting away, as if yet passed an eternity in the cell. Scorning about him, as if to make up for his missing pieces, is a deep, all encompassing darkness. Scally Poker mentioned repeating self sacrifice? No way. No! For some reason, upon seeing Mr. Mononobe, you remember what the Scali Poco said. You remember how, over the course of this endlessly looping war, he chipped away at himself until there was nothing left. You remember the body, so far beyond repair, that he patched up with black smoke. Did Mr. Mononobe... ...sacrifice himself? Ikebukuro Coliseum, Ushima Ward. music so this is the plan to secure more information plan to uh, uh, basically do acting as a double agent leading them through the Ikuruku Dungeon uh, down to Shima Ward near Nanima to uh, hopefully some memories from nearby Penitentia at that very moment Cut and his companion stand far beneath the Ikuruku at the entrance to a seemingly endless labyrinth Shuichi has followed the clues to his brother left and has opened the hidden door deep within Gorgeous background. My sacred effect's lighting up like torch. It's like it wants me to follow it. That exception's gotta be in there somewhere. Yeah, we finally made it here. This is where the memories of the Ikabuka Arcade are stored. If the memories washed away from the past loops by the great flood of time end up anywhere, they'll be here. Ikabuka Gate, I see. 
There must be some hints to the battle from previous loops that we know nothing about. Hints to winning the battle, so that's what the dungeon's about. Okay. So basically, the entire dungeon system is all about getting the upper hand and making this the last loop. That is such a cool concept. <laughs> this whole damn place belongs in the museum. But it wasn't even built. I wouldn't go around touching things if I were you. This might look like an ordinary system, but it isn't. These cracks and craters, memories of a previous loop's war, look to me like a way of, to accumulate information. In much the same way as the books in the old buildings that Shinji Academy are actually crystallized data, which I would know if you actually let me see the translated. I'm sure that once you touch them, the shadows of memories will come out to attack us, just like they did back there. Oh, <laughs> right. When they when uh, we touched the book earlier, a whole bunch of dragons came out or something. So those were memories. I was confused by why there were just a whole bunch of en uh, enemies, monsters. I just assumed it was like Yoke saw something or some weird stuff like that. But no, uh, they were memories escaping into something tangible. That's interesting. Hmm. So these crumbling walls are the scars of a loop now past. Have you noticed something, old master? No. We were only thinking of the great flood of time, how many times it must have drowned this Tokyo. No wonder many hundreds, if not thousands of years, it would span if calculated. Every time the flow of time is reset, our bodies are restored and our memories are erased. We wonder if, after such a long time, our minds and bodies are perhaps being worn down like these walls. Huh. The same goes for the world pillars. They have been separated from their sacred artifacts, and their memories are etched into these artifacts. The bodies and souls of those artifacts only should not be wearing down, and yet... Surely the actual me media used to record the loops cannot be subject to being rewound. That would defeat the purpose. Mm, so, oh! Claude is saying uh, the sacred artifacts themselves are vulnerable if you, uh, yeah. So they, they can be a weak point. If you get rid of them, they lose that information across time. Logically, just like the walls and dealings of this labyrinth, they will accumulate damage and eventually wear down. Moreover, consider for a moment the existence of the individual who started these loops, or else of someone who is observing their outcomes. Hmm. If such a fear is indeed real, and that figure is mortal, will they still be alive, safe and sound? After hundreds upon thousands of years, will they not waste away to nothing? So the one outside who would orchestrate this? That is a good question, but I, you know, I guess I somewhat was wondering in the back of my mind. Like, if this is really something orchestrated by outside, it doesn't really make sense that it would have lasted this long. So, it's something that doesn't add up here. There's no way this entire thing is just self-contained. After all, like... <sighs> Tokyo was, had those walls built around them before him, right? Before they were summoned there. So it had to have come from some sort of outside source to have constructed this. Well, that's the, just the source of what I'm thinking. You know, he's maybe something wrong without one reason. Operator of backup plan D identified. I have been waiting for you, Master. Right. You've done good work. I'll take the data you've observed up until now. Do attaches the rough gas cable and begins treating the extensive amount of data. The device was mass-produced for the investigation of the hazards of this zone known as Tokyo. From the state of this replicant's inner workings, you can tell that this particular device has already seen multiple loops. He does not worry, however. Once the replicant has worn out after too many loops, anyone will simply be sent to replace it. Hmm. Do feels the tiniest bit of pity for the device in front of him. After all, our 19 circumstances aren't too different from his own. It was expendable, a mere backup clone for the true geniuses. Even his name is nothing more than his number. Two. Oh. <laughs> He's really just named two, huh? A mere backup clone for the true geniuses. Everything in this world, in themselves, is disposable, replaceable. To the 23 representatives and the upper echelons of Game Masters, this is no more than a game of a war, ambition, and eventual reign. Is that a reference to like warmongers and bears and rule makers? At the top of the game masters sit the three true geniuses who perform the three true guilds decision making. A girl named Kurin and the two others. 
The guild masters of the three guilds. So is Kern the guild master of uh the rule makers? That's what it's implying. Oh. oh no. So these are all world representatives. But they're not guild masters. Uh, Kern is the world rep is the guild master. Kern herself had to find the cover for the last of those world representatives who neglected their duties. Rake, the advice that had been created, could fulfill those defective world representatives' goals and rules for them. Trends like these are the reasons that no matter what happens or who fails, this world of Tokyo will continue to run smoothly. Okay, so in case of a loop that does happen again, uh, they would have Break take up the role of, uh, you know, the irreversible Ashalas of Tsavi Poka or something. Well, you know, they would be sure to, like, stop to Tsavi Poka earlier, and I guess to replace him with Break, something like that. That is my understanding. The game in Tokyo will never end. It will always continue. It will ensure it. The kill game will never end. It's pretty admirable of everyone to keep going without knowing all that. Master? Is something wrong? Hmm. Let me propose something to you. Oh, that was a duel, Lisa. If you'd want me to deactivate you right here, right now, I would. Looking upon the beaten, battered form of R19, Joe feels pity blowing up within. They wouldn't feel any pain. You'd simply cease to exist. I have the authority to do this. I'm offering you out of passion. Mr. Mondobe? It's your buddy. Before you stand, Mr. Mononobe, no longer human. F F father Bill Solomon's trembling voice echoes throughout the chamber as he emerges from your arm. The man before you abandoned you and disappeared. Why do you still chase after him? The darkness from Mr. Monobe's mouth should he rise and twist in an approximation of a moving mouth. However, the words are spun together in Mr. Monobe's voice from Mr. Monobe's lips. Who are you? You're not my teacher. I suppose I should introduce myself, Arison. You may call me Mahakala. Oh, this Mahakala? The world representative of Divoka. This tone is level, kind, and full of compassion. The voice embodies everything you know of Mr. Mononobe. I am an ally of Tascali Poka and the others against whom you, you are just fighting. You see, I too desire a ruinous war which leaves nothing unscathed. Where's Mr. Mononobe? Get out of his body! Do you really want that? If I leave this man's body, he truly will disappear. What? Why? This man's foolishly discarded his sacred artifact and handed over his rule. Now, he is nothing more than a hollow shell. Nothing but memories, or with nowhere to house him. Think of him as a ghost. One who will never be able to leave a battle zone. You mean... Kai used to be? Don't tell me! He sacrificed himself for me! Indeed. And even more foolishly, he erased every trace of his existence beforehand. Uh, 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 what the blazes is going on? That's what I want to know. What on earth is happening? During Shinjuku's Akami's long break, Mr. Jean and Mr. Treaton have been trying to figure out where Mr. Monobi disappeared to. But not only have they failed, they have also discovered that all traces that he had ever been there had vanished along with them. He has disappeared from security for of all the staff room, but he was also events and even the class yearbooks. <laughs> Holy fucking shit. It's almost as if Kyoma Monobe never existed in this world in the first place. That foolish, destructive honesty is precisely why I adore him. Then. Once the next loop begins, this man will complete, be completely erased from this Tokyo. Erased? I won't let that happen. Ah, how wonderful. 
And then, which everything is destroyed. That is what I wish for. Complete destruction. And in that destruction lies the world's salvation. This Sally Poka always had lack in ambition. He strove for an eternal war when he should have wished for a final one. Oh, oh that is cold. <laughs> oh, call of shit. A grand war that leaves nothing standing. That destroys even the memories that spin across loops. Uh -uh. I will begin with the first Yuga, and I will end with the last. I shall ensure it. Upon the name of Mahakala, I will vow I will remake all and everything from scratch. Christian, preservation, and destruction. I will repeat the cycle as many times as need be. My wish is for no one to be able to break out of that cycle. You can't do that. I won't let you. Not my watch. No, I reject your proposal, Master. Why? Do you want your death to be more gruesome than it needs to be? Answer. I wish to choose my time of deactivation for myself. I have learned that we can choose one's own date. Who dies when? Who permits what? Who has to die? Things like that are for someone else to decide. This game is over. I won't let it loop again. I'll put an end to it. Miss Ramona Nobi's one remaining eye glistens with pride. How unfortunate. I fear you leave me with no other option than war. Although I have known from the beginning that there could be no else between us. Be no peace between us, that is. At the moment, Mr. Mononomi begins to disappear, as if being swallowed by darkness. Wait! Where are you taking him? You stream through the darkness, but Mr. Mononobi and Mahakala have already vanished, as that they were never even there. There you are! I've opened all the other cells! We have to get out of here! Mr. Mononobi. Well, let's set out then. Everything alright, Karen? Pretty ran away from me. Talk about biting the hand that eats you. I was going to take him to the world representatives of Tiernanog, but he told me he would use his own pass and this beard. Huh. Sorry to hear that. Looks like he ran away twice. Yes, that was a long battle. <laughs> uh, Dusk Brothers. Well, go on. Greetings, my friends. How I have missed you. Hello everyone, nice to meet you. As of today, I'll be your new trainee physician. You can call me Dr. Shenong. Let me see. So you moved to Shinjuku after the fall of Penitentia. My last school kind of exploded, so I'll be here at Shinjuku Academy from now on. I can see many familiar faces here already, but I look forward to getting to know them, those of you who I don't recognize.
It can't be. J Jacob. In the flesh. I thought I might pay my old guild a visit. I found myself missing your voice, you see. Your battle with the Scally Poke at Narima's Penitentiary Academy has drawn to a close. However, with the treaties between our old representatives dissolved, no one knows what lies ahead. And little do you know that the next battle is already at your doorstep. Chapter 10 Warmongers Overture Smoke on the front lines End Alright, final thoughts for this. Let's search up the guild. Oh no, my soda! Okay, thoughts on this chapter. Um, there was a lot more going on. I wouldn't say it was more emotional though. And then again, that much is to be because I don't necessarily feel for as much with the captors, but it definitely tackled a very tricky subject about, uh, you know, war and the kind of mentality that goes behind it. You know, you can think it's like super atrocious and like in many respects it is, but to sort of shield your eyes from the truth that some people were just raised in war and know nothing but war. That's a very tricky subject that, yeah, like, we can only be aware of really tangentially, but not really fully grasp or understand to any true depth on, as we're in that situation. And of course, this is taken to an extreme with something like Scali Poco, who is a mythological feature whose entire universe was created from, like, the, this, the creation of war, or like, the sustenance of it. There's a lot more coordinated action from the guild now, too, which is interesting, it's not just ambulating around and trying to figure out how to be a guild at all, but instead we're seeing the fruits of the alliance take full now. We see the berserkers handling uh, the investigation of Nurima Ward uh, through the Dental Ward, I believe, uh, to be able to access the information of the dungeons. Uh, the Ikebrukuri Great Gate, that is, holding memories of past groups that just weren't accessible to the other world representatives all the time. And that is something that they've used strategically based on their experiences with the yet-to-be-translated uh, Shinjuku Old School Building Dungeon. We also learned of more peculiar strategies that were taken up, such as the exploitation of uh, the power that comes from creating an exception. And that's a very interesting take on like doing that. And it seems that Shira is now just openly coordinating with his own, uh, the owner of his uh, sacred artifact, it, the original one that is. And we can also see, I mean, the protagonist didn't really communicate with his past lives in this case, which was a bit surprising to me. But we can see he's more openly communicating with Solomon himself, which is a nice touch. So, and we are finally harnessing the power of just, uh, individuals and their associated, uh, I guess, uh, powers to that actually transcend time uh, between your thoughts or you know uh, our lives of the past or now the memories of these dungeons we're finally finding a way to actually not feel hopeless in this battle that's pretty cool you know I thought somehow going in it, it would be kind of shoehorned in how we could actually find an advantage uh, <laughs> because it's like three girls having multiple lives to go through uh, model loops to construct such a carefully tight-knit game that is rigged against them. I, I couldn't even fathom how you, they would go against that. And yet, they did manage to find a way that was like, fairly believable uh, with Solomon's, uh, I guess, inclusion in this unique loop. We were able to use that power of Double Dragon. We were also able to just be aware of our past in general. And uh, I think that Solomon was key there. And the other part of that key, unfortunately, Mr. Mononome seems to have been overtaken by Mahakal. We'll see how that turns out. 
There is a sprite work already of him on the wiki. He looks pretty cute. But dang, that is a there's there are very dark perspectives here. Like I was kind of stopping in chapter nine because there were some perspectives I could understand. But a lot of these like um I can kind of understand in terms of, you know, it logically makes sense and I can try to put my foot in those shoes, but like <laughs> It's not the same as actually being in war, and you know, between Discovery Poka, who whose existence and logically makes sense for them to you know want an endless war, and Mahakala, who doesn't just want an endless war, he wants a, a final one. That is gruesome. That is like hard to imagine. Jacob's inclusion was kind of random, to be honest, <laughs> but uh, I guess that was kind of what he was doing for like just wandering. Very well timed. Hmm. Yeah. Overall, I'd say this chapter raised the stakes in terms of a uh, factional unity and uh, factional conflict, and actually gave us a taste of how it could actually be realizable to win this war. I'm looking forward to more. Was it was the wait? Um. Well, considering I was spoiled for all the battles, anyways, the mirror concept was real cool. Even if you're attacking the mirror it's by itself, it took a lot of its. So you, you really would... The only reason I was able to is I was spoiled. I just wish I wasn't spoiled. Other than that, uh, I think the battle's fun-ish enough. <laughs> it's just, it's a post the end in your era, so it's kind of like... Not, the six aren't really assignments like that. Except for that one battle with a... Uh, one battle with Shadon kind of up my ass. <laughs> I definitely need to bring a, a different team there. That was nice. And uh, and the stakes were still tangible as usual. If I've been spoiled. Okay, thank you for... Uh, joining me through this journey. This time around, I took my time rather than playing it all in one day, which was an awful physiological experience. Uh, this one took over two days. But yeah, I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.